Alright guys, it's Paul from WorkOn here. I've eventually made it back to starting videos again after my slightly extended absence after my holiday. And I hope this video finds all of you well. My latest offering is the ICM 148 scale kit of the Gotha 242E World War II liner. As you can see from these early images here, <coughs> excuse me, the detail on the surfaces, the external surfaces, is very good indeed, representing as it does the various wood, plywood, and fabric surfaces of the aircraft. And in the interior, the very delicate pieces to represent the framing. There are also 20 seats provided in the kit. These would have been used for transporting troops from point A to point B. However, I decided to omit these from the kit as I wanted to show it with some cargo instead and you'll see more of that later. So to start off the build, I'm removing the bottom of the forward cabin area. This is the external surface on the underside and I'll be inserting the two plastic plates in a moment which represent the actual floor of the interior. So I'll let you watch that and some of the other parts for a few moments and I will return to you shortly. So this is the second of the floor panels going in now and there is a tab at the back of this panel which I understand may be to enable you to more securely fit the tailgate in the closed position should you choose and there's also an attachment point at the rear upper area of the um, cargo cabin so that you can display the tailgate open if you would prefer. And next up is the attachment of the main frame in the fuselage and it also carries the wing spar. I've employed the liquid cement bottle to help me out here keeping that piece in position until the glue dries. So what you see now is the interior cargo area with the frames in place. There will be side attachments slipped onto the wing spar to cover these areas in due course. There was no specific bulkhead separating the cockpit area from the cargo bay. And now you can see all the internal parts painted up. 
ready for attachment and also the sub-assemblies for the wings, the tail booms and the control surfaces. I found it easier to build this model in subsections because there's not really a lot of detail inside the aircraft and this um, helped to move the build on a little bit quicker. And now what little detail there is in the cockpit, we have two sets of pedals and two separate styles of control column for the crew members. These pieces are nicely produced and also now the instrument panel with the transfer from the transfer sheet in the kit applied to give a little bit of detail to this part. And now the cockpit floor. It should be noted that this transfer here is not indicated on the, trans on the instruction sheet and it's a failing of the same ICM kit where there are no callouts for paints and there is no indication to put that transfer in place. This is the pilot seat with the super fabric seat belts from the Edward range. I find these very good to use and easy to attach with crystal clear. And following on now, <coughs> we have the floor for the rear tailgate. If you care to look on the internet for GOTA 242 images, you will find some photographs showing a rear facing machine gun um, firing downwards from the rear transparency. And I was quite surprised when I checked that some Gotas could carry up to eight machine guns. Mine only has two. I'd like it to go off the ground. So here is the tailgate put together and that previous part, the floor, will rest against this frame that you see here and it locks in at the rear of the canopy at the extreme tail. So coming up now, the test fit of the fuselage sides and if you're squeamish, look away. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky trying to slide this into position. You don't want to slam it into the side of the framework and have to rebuild all the frames but a little bit of patience and care and it does actually move into position rather well. All these pieces that form the cabin, both the front area here and the tailgate, plus the underside here as I'm showing, and indeed the canopy sections which are uh, three major pieces, they all have their edges um, angled so that the attachment should be a lot cleaner. I found that there was still some requirement to be careful and use a little bit of water-based filler just to make sure. And there's also a slot either side of the forward fuselage. This is a test run for the cockpit floor. So in that last section you saw a little bit of work 
on the wings and the tail booms along the join lines which needed a little bit of attention with some filler. Here on the rudders, the upper pin you can see on the rudder in the background helps to keep the item safely in neutral. However, if you wish to adjust the angle of the rudder, it's better to remove the upper pin. Now this is the pilot seat with the rear straps now in position. And I'm about to attach the side straps in the same manner. A small quantity of crystal clear on the back of the strap, or the belt I should say and carefully push over the side into the seating area and any excess can be removed using a damp cotton bud. And needless to say, the uh, co-pilot seat was similarly attended to. These seat belts come in I think it's 48th and 32nd scale. I'm not sure they come in 72nd scale. You would need to check that. But I find them very good. And there we have the finished presentation. <coughs> And next up, the fuselage sides, the external surfaces, have been added. They have been sealed in with filler where appropriate. And I'm now using a little bit of super glue on the wing joint and sliding the left wing into position along the guidelines in the inside of the wing parts. There was a little bit of gapping at the back of the wing, but that is easily able to be attended to using your preferred filler. Again, this shot really shows the good detail, the air brake on the top of the wing and this fabric effect to the rear of the wing. I think ICM um, addressed those particular issues rather nicely. And the forward sections of the tail boom, the upper and lower sections, are also now in place. I chose to adjust the angle of the wing control surfaces and in doing so you have to bear in mind that the hinges and the actuator arms need to be um, modified so that they sit at the correct angle. So when you drop the flaps, you won't be able to put these pieces, the hinges, on as they are presented in the model. You'll need to trim them. That's a bit um, awkward, but it's certainly doable. And you can see here, the begin to see the size of the model. It's got quite a, a large wingspan. And now the attachment of the tail booms onto the airframe.
So that's the tail booms in place. If you thought some of that stretch of footage was a little bit uh, disjointed and shaky, you would not be wrong. Um, as soon as the tail booms were on, I found that the aircraft was a little bit awkward to manoeuvre. But um, just go carefully if you're building the kit. This is a dry run for the horizontal tail that sits between the two uh, fins at the end of the tail boom and there is a elevator that goes on at the back of this piece. The elevator actually has attachment points and it may be a better idea to try and fit those at the same time as the elevator because they will when you're doing that permanently, I should say, because they will help to hold everything in place while the glue dries. I don't know what I was pointing at there. <laughs> Maybe you can help me out. <laughs> but um, just manoeuvring it round so you can see a little bit better how everything goes together. And I think after this I went for a coffee and a lie down. So, back on track. Time to attach the ailerons and the flaps. And for this job I just used the polystyrene tube cement. These items go on very nicely. I didn't encounter any particular problems with them and the uh, attachment points for the various mass balances and um, hinges and whatnot all line up really nicely so you shouldn't have any particular problem with those items. And I think coming up next you will see the it's me just gently manoeuvring the wing into range of the camera. There we go. You can see that the flaps have now been attached in the drooped position and the paint, sorry not the paint, the adhesive is starting to dry nicely. And talking of paint, I applied a pale grey undercoat as normal. This occasion big soft brush and some pale grey paint. The one thing I have tried to do with this kit is paint it all in acrylics. Ah, there's a story. I'm not a keen advocate of acrylics as of yet. It may grow on me, and I think in part it's because I've used enamels for so long, but these are the new Humbro acrylics and they are now the only source for their very good previous Luftwaffe shades. The shades carry forward well from enamels into acrylics, but I much prefer using enamels. <coughs> I probably will always mourn their demise. Anyway, enough of my problems. <laughs> the paint goes on very nicely, I have to say, and when you paint it with a paintbrush, it gives good coverage, so I can't complain too much. Uh, it was a nice smooth finish and they do spray equally good. I think I thinned the dark green out a little too much when I went to do the initial uh, upper surface colours, but we'll cross that bridge in the not too distant future. But the colours can come up good in the end. This is an aircraft with an eastern front colour scheme. It does not seem to have had the yellow fuselage band around the tailgate, uh, but it did have yellow underwing markings for the Eastern Front Theatre. The colour scheme, when you see it, is my take on a genuine photograph of a Gotha 242 on the Eastern Front with that style of application. Um, I won't spoil it for you yet, but I would say it's quite unusual. I haven't seen any other Gotas carrying that particular style of Eastern Front colour scheme. <clears throat> this is the kit after the paint has dried, 
all the join lines are hidden under a nice coat of paint and you wouldn't know any different if I didn't tell you. And here is the lighter of the two dark greens. It took two or three sprayed coats for me to get the right viscosity, if that's the right word, to cover the aircraft as I wanted. And initially I did have to paint a sort of standard scheme, so there is some light mottle on the sides of the fuselage, the tail booms and the fins and rudders. This was um, darkened quite noticeably as the build went on, sorry, as the paintwork went on, and it, um, as I say, came out rather well at the end of the day. And coming up now is the continued application of the colour scheme, so I'll leave you to watch that and return to you again in a short period of time. So that was the application of the disruptive model on the upper and side surfaces after having applied a splinter pattern to the top of the wings, the cabin and the horizontal tail. And the two images you've just seen, as you can also see here, involve the support of the tailgate in the open position using brass rods to um, take the place of the plastic pieces. I thought the rods would be um, instrumental in giving the assembly a little bit more strength. So heading towards the end of the build in a few minutes guys, so this is one of the last uh, jobs I have to do and that's to remove the mask all from the transparencies and tidy up any bits of debris that um, come away with the, the coating. And in order to do the tidy up work, I used a dampened cotton bud just to carefully remove the debris, bearing in mind that although it's got a coat of pledge uh, on the upper surfaces over the paintwork, well, on all surfaces over the paintwork, the paint is acrylic paint, so it could be susceptible to being removed if you go too hard at trying to clean up the 
transparency themselves if you go onto the frames. So this is the process that you're seeing now. So guys, that's us coming to the end of this build now. It just remains for me to say thank you to you as ever for accompanying me on this journey and I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's a very unusual subject for a kit and I like the unusual. Um, the photos that are coming up after this section of video are slightly lighter in colour. That's because I used the flash in the camera to illuminate particularly the cockpit, a little better for you so that you can see the detail. So I hope the next kit won't be too long before it hits the screen here. And until then, I wish you all the best. Happy modelling and I'll catch you soon. Thanks again. Cheers. Bye.